Hey guys and welcome back to Nawine. In this video we are continuing with Mendel's law of inheritance and we will talk about law of independent assortment. And to understand this better it's it's you know it's beneficial if you have seen first two laws if you have if you have understood those two laws this is going to be easy. So what we saw in the last video, what we talked about in the law of segregation is that the, you know, what Mendel studied is one gene at a time. He just took one character at a time and he saw how the inheritance occurs in case of only one gene. Now, after understanding that, next what he did is he took two genes at a time. That means he took two characters at a time and he saw what happens if there are two genes how they are inherited so that's what now we are going to see in first and second law we just talked about one gene and they were monohybrid cross and in this uh, law we are going to talk about two genes what happens if we take two characters at a time let's say for example he took two plants one had Okay, let me change the color. Yellow color seeds and they were round in shape. Okay. And the other plant had green color seeds which were wrinkled in shape. Right. So, there are two characters. Character for the color and character for the shape of the seeds. So the first things first, when we start with this, we know we always start with true breeding plant. So true breeding plant for yellow and round seed would be capital Y, capital Y, capital R, capital R. There are two alleles for every gene. Okay. And cross it with true breeding plant of green and wrinkle seed. That would be small Y, small Y smaller smaller now one point over here these uh, letters that i have put in capital that means they are the dominant over these two characters that means yellow color and round shape is dominant over green color and wrinkled shape all right so now what happens the gamete formation right now how gamete formation can occur in this case this y and this y has to separate right similarly over here this we have talked about in previous laws all the alleles are going to separate but in the last videos we took in consideration only one gene so that was easy but here there are two genes so what happens is this allele of this gene can combine with either this allele or this allele and come in the gamete so any of the combination can occur let's say for example this y comes with this r or this y comes with this r or the other way around this y with this r or this y with this r right so four gametes any of the combination can occur i hope this is easy to uh, understand right any of the combination either this y comes with this r or this y comes with this r so there are again two combination and for this y it can be either this one or this one so again two more but what happens is they are all homologous both both the genes doesn't matter if it is dominant or recessive they are homogeneous so that's why the gametes are going to be same it doesn't matter whether it is uh, you know whatever the combination the gametes are same so this one is easy to understand now the gametes are formed now what happens fusion of the gametes no matter what gamete is fusing over here the end result is capital y with small y capital r with small r because those are the only possibility 
doesn't matter which gum it is fusing you only have capital y capital r and small y small r so this is going to be the f1 in case of uh, these two genes now all the plants are going to have the same genotype because there is no other combination present so now let's apply the law of dominance over here we so we can see two alleles that are dominant along with two recessive alleles so what will happen this yellow color will dominate this green color and this round shape will dominate the wrinkle shape so f1 generation all the plants are going to be yellow and round seeds all the plants would have yellow and round seeds now this was still easy to understand the magic happens in the f2 generation right so what is the next step we cross two plants of f1 generation now here let's look at it carefully so when uh, mendel cross the uh, f1 generation when he crossed two plants from f1 generation what so far we have observed we have observed or we are you know used to seeing three is to one ratio that's what should have happened right uh three plants with yellow and round and one with green and wrinkle should have appeared but in this case what he observed is nine is to three is to three is to one what is that okay this was a little surprising let's let's see how and what happened now this was actually the key observation that he found and that he understood that something different is happening and what happened is let's try to first segregate these alleles and then see what uh, combinations uh, do we get this y and this y is going to separate and these two alleles are going to get separated so what happens is this y capital y can either combine with this capital r or small r so you can have two combinations over here or this y can combine with capital or small r so here also we can have two combinations so at the end we are having four different kinds of gametes all four gametes if you see are different than each other similarly this plant also will produce four different gametes same gametes because they are the same in genotype now when you want to see the combination outcome of these four gamete fusion we go for pinnet square right uh, in case of uh, mono hybrid or in case of first two laws we were dealing with only one single gene and we were just keeping those gametes in the pinnet square here there are two genes okay that's why there are four combinations so in the pinnet square we need to keep these four gametes on both the sides so let's do that so this should give a better picture we have capital y uh, capital r capital y capital r for both the plants capital y small r again for both the plant so we have these four gametes okay put on both the sides and made the pinnet square because this is gametes from one plant and this is gametes for another plant so different possible outcomes could be there let's say for example these two gametes fuse what is the combination capital y and capital r so both the capital y even if there is only one capital y we know now the law of dominance says that even if one dominant allele is present it is going to express the phenotype so we have here capital y and capital r so the seed is going to be yellow and round okay this is how i have shown here in this combination there is capital y capital y capital r and small r but there is a capital L so this is going to be round and this is yellow of course the next combination is capital y small y capital r capital r so of course it is going to be yellow and round here capital y small y capital r small r so it is going to be yellow and round again similarly you can make combinations for all of these and what you observed is let's say for example over here capital y capital y small r small r so there is a dominant allele present for the color but there is no dominant allele for the uh, shape so this seed is yellow but wrinkled in shape
right similarly over here there is a capital y but there is no capital r so this is going to be yellow wrinkle seed uh, in this case there are cap uh, small y small y with capital r capital r. so there is no dominant allele for the color but dominant allele for the shape is there so this is going to be green and round in shape and the last one is small y small y small r small r only only uh, recessive alleles are present so this one is going to be green and wrinkled in shape so so now let's see the different combinations that we got this one is round and yellow 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there are nine plants that have yellow and round seeds the original that we started that's how it looked in the parental generation not the genotype only the phenotype so there are nine plants that have round and yellow seeds then there is another combination where the seeds are yellow but they are wrinkled so that is one two and three so three plants that are yellow but they have wrinkle seeds the next combination we have is the seeds are green and round so one two and three three such combinations where the seeds are green but they are round and there is only one type which has green and wrinkle seeds so this was the phenotype that he observed which is very very different than so far what he was observing 3 is to 1 in case of one gene okay so for two genes what he found is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 okay this is the phenotype he observed and this observation made him think that these alleles that they are separating in case of two genes they don't depend on each other you know they are independently making combination doesn't matter this y makes combination with this r or this r this can be the small y with capital r smaller it doesn't matter they are independently assorting they are separating themselves independently and that's why you have different combinations of gametes which forms different combinations in the end right so basically what law of uh, assortment independent assortment states is what it says is what law of independent assortment says is that alleles of two different genes because now there are two genes that we are talking about the alleles assort into gametes independently of one another it it doesn't matter where this y goes with which capital r or small y it doesn't matter the independent they they assort independently of one another both the alleles of two different genes they assort into gametes independently of one another and that's what we saw right any combination could occur doesn't matter where this particular y or where this particular r is going so that is law of independent assortment where you get the ratio at the end in the f2 generation the ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 now this is what phenotypic ratio always remember we talk about phenotypic ratio in law of inheritance now this is not the whole like it is not an universal law that we can apply everywhere and why am i saying this is we have talked about linked genes we have talked about three point cross if if you want you can just have a look there we in case of humans when we talk about the chromosomes there are so many genes that are present on one single chromosome and what happens is in the meiosis we also know recombination between two homologous chromosomes occur these two don't look homologous but assume that they are so in that case when the recombination occurs part of some genes get exchanged between two homologous chromosome in that case the genes that are very close to each other let's say for these two genes it is very very unlikely that these genes would actually separate from each other they would always you know get exchanged together because they are very close and then because of that what happens when the gametes are formed these kind of very close or what we call linked genes they always inherited they get inherited 
together okay just a little bit extra information if you want to know in detail more about it you can have a look in the three point cross but law of independent assortment does not hold true in case of linked genes just remember this one extra point it is not true for linked genes because it is very unlikely that they can get separated they will always be together they will be inherited together so that's all that's all about the law of independent assortment so i hope this video was helpful we'll see you with another topic next time until then keep learning